Over the past 50 years, yellow nut sedge has been the dominant sedge weed in Virginia turf. But that dominance has been challenged over the past 10 years by Klingas, green Klinga and false green Klinga. These Klingas have become an increasingly problematic in the Mid-Atlantic region and in the Northeast. The main difference between false green Klinga and yellow nut sedge is its growth habit. False green Klinga develops a very dense mat of rhizomes. It is normally dark green and grows no more than five inches tall when left unmown. Its rhizomes make false green Klinga more dependent on sequential herbicide treatments. Nut sedge will have nutlets on the roots and a more sparse growth habit with yellow foliage. So we're here at the Virginia Tech Golf Course in Blacksburg, Virginia on Virginia Tech's campus. We put together a demonstration to look at different uh, Klinga control products, looking at single applications at high rates and sequential applications at lower rates. Um, and we are about seven weeks after these treatments were applied. And as you can see here in front of me is our untreated check, um, a very uniform population of false green Kalinga. And we're about 90% false green Kalinga population in this plot. In the area around me, uh, the superintendent treated for false green Kalinga. As you can see, there is a reduced population. Let's see how our herbicides performed. So the treatment we're looking at now is Celero. Celero is a relatively new product to the turf market, and its active ingredient is imazosulfuron. Um, recent trials over the past couple years at Virginia Tech has shown that it has excellent control of Kalinga and sedges. Um, right here, these plots we're looking at are Celero applied once at 14 ounces per acre. Um, and we're seeing relatively good control, um, but this control is not on par with what we've seen in previous research. There is some breakthrough um, with this single application. Um, when you look at this plot, this plot received two applications at eight ounces per acre. And the second application was applied at 21 days after the initial treatment. And you can see the efficacy we're getting from two applications. So the next treatment we're gonna talk about is sedge hammer or halosulfuron. Uh, this is probably one of the most commonly used herbicides for sedge and clean control in the market. So this plot we're looking at here is sedge hammer applied at 1.3 ounces per acre and applied once. And we can see there are there is some Kalinga beginning to regrow. Um, but when you look at the other plot here, this is sedge hammer applied at 0.65 pounds per acre, applied twice. And the second application went out at 21 days after treatment. And you can see about 98% control in this plot. So next, let's talk about some contact herbicides that are commonly used for sedge control. This, is sulfen this plot right here is sulfentrazone applied at six ounces per acre and only received one application. And you can see at this point that we're getting about 70% uh, control. This plot here is sulf sulfentrazone or dismiss applied twice at four ounces per acre. Um, and you can see the increase in control we received from two applications. The next contact herbicide I want to talk about is Bacigran or Benazon. Uh, this plot right here received one application of Bacigran applied at 32 ounces per acre. Um, and we're looking at about 95% control at this point. Um, this plot over here is Bacigran applied at uh, 32 ounces per acre, applied twice, and applied, the second application came out at 21 days after treatment. Um, and again, similar amount of control, about 95% control um, compared to the one application. All right, so the next treatment we want to look at is Vexus. Uh, the active ingredient in Vexus is primisulfan. Uh, this is a relatively new product to the turf market. Vexus is a granular product, and that makes it unique compared to a lot of the other sedge products on the market. In this plot right here, uh, it got one application of 174 pounds per acre product. In this plot right here, it received two applications. Um, and the second application was applied 28 days later, also at 174 pounds of product per acre. Um, both plots are showing great control, um, but we can see from one application there has been some cling and breakthrough. Um, in the plot that received two applications, we see great control. Here we go. Here's some example of some plots where we have tank mix some of the commonly used uh, sedge products on the market. Um, here's, here, this plot right here is Celero at eight ounces per acre uh, combined with sulfentrazone at four ounces per acre. And this plot right here is sedge hammer applied at 0.65 ounces per acre in combination with sulfentrazone at four ounces per acre. Um, and you can look at these plots and tell there's definitely some antagonism going on when you mix these uh, herbicides together. Um, and possibly an explanation could be the fact that uh, Celero and sedge hammer are a more systemic herbicide and sulfentrazone is more of a rapid acting herbicide. So that possibly could be an explanation upon why we're seeing reduced activity. 
And in the past, we've conducted experiments looking at some of these combinations, and we did not see this reduced efficacy. And that, this does make sense from a herbicide mechanism standpoint, where sulfentrazone is very rapid acting, and sedgehammer celero are more systemic and slower acting herbicides. For these treatments to be most effective, you need to make sure to apply them in mid-May to early June. This allows Kalinga to be fully emerged when you make the application. And I believe this demonstration really highlights the importance of making sure you make that second application for season-long Kalinga control. Although this demonstration was not funded by any sole entity, our recent research involving false green Kalinga was made possible by generous donations, grants, and collaborations from New Farm, Corteva, FMC, and PBI Gordon.